What's up everyone? Welcome back to a brand new video. As you could probably tell, you may have even been part of the people suggesting this. Well, a lot of people wanted this scenario to continue. It started as a mini, but it seems like this is going to turn into a short three-parter. And of course, we ended off with Z last time, so we're going to continue into Super this time. As a brief recap, well, everyone's pretty overpowered. The humans have God Key, the Saiyans have Super Saiyan God, and they have a new friend, Cell. Yup, he's here this time, and he's on his journey to become a good. So how will that turn out? Well, we'll be seeing that in this part. For this video, let's hit a like goal of 3,000 likes, and once we hit that, I'll continue with the final parts of the series. Anyways, let's pick up from here. So, naturally after Dragon Ball Z, Beerus is going to be waking up from his nap. But before that, I want to touch on Cell. So a lot of people in the comments were telling me, well, if Cell doesn't have Frieza's DNA, he should look different. And in all honesty, I disagree a bit. Jiro did design him to be perfect after all, meaning he probably put him in his image. And if that were the case, it wouldn't really matter about his DNA, that wouldn't change his appearance. But you know what, since this is kind of a crazy what if, why not get a little more fun with it? So I did give Cell a new design. I wasn't really sure what to go with, so I looked at Toriyama's concept sketches of Cell for inspiration. And I made a somewhat simple yet effective change. I removed that weird crown thing he has on his head and his chin strap, and replaced it with a more normal jawline and hair that looks like a Saiyan's hair. He is mostly Saiyan after all. As for his ears, I made them kind of pointed as a Namekian's would be. Because if we're going by the idea that Cell's genetic makeup will change his look, he would look more so Saiyan with a little bit of Namekian mixed in. And since this is also based off of Toriyama's own designs, well, I feel it's kind of fair. So, we'll be rolling with this. It's cursed, but that's why you guys gotta be careful what you ask for. Now, we get onto the meat of the story. So, Beerus wakes up and naturally he's gonna be looking for a Super Saiyan God. He saw it in his dreams and he wants to see if it's real. And it turns out, it already exists. Awesome! That ends up cutting out, well, pretty much every step. He honestly didn't expect it to be this easy, but whatever, this makes it more convenient. He goes to Earth, and he ends up finding a few Super Saiyan gods, and some Android that's part Saiyan somehow. In terms of strength, they're all very strong, so he asked them to show off Super Saiyan God. In all honesty, they didn't really know what Super Saiyan God was, or even really knew that this was the name of the form. So they just show off their most powerful form, that one red-haired one that they have. Cell has it too because he has hair now, but anyways, Beerus sees this as impressive and he realizes this is the Super Saiyan God. So many strong fighters to choose from, but there's one that's the strongest of all, and that would most likely be Cell. Even without his Frieza race DNA, he's still exceptionally strong. So, in his own Super Saiyan God form, he would be the strongest here. Seemingly. Beerus ends up fighting him, and he has a good time doing it, but he still wins regardless. He's still impressed though, so this is the strongest they have to offer. Pretty cool. Some of the other Saiyans want to fight though, and he wonders why. If Cell was the strongest Super Saiyan God, what are they going to do against him? Well, Goku and Vegeta reveal that they have something up their sleeve, something that they didn't show off before. Through their own intense training with Super Saiyan God, and with their knowledge of Super Saiyan, they inadvertently found out how to go Super Saiyan Blue. This impresses Beerus even more, and Cell's actually a bit annoyed by this. Did they hide this from him purposefully? Why didn't they tell him about this? He's been on great behavior, does this mean that they don't really trust him with this power? Cell was under the impression that Super Saiyan God was the limit, but they've gone above it and haven't told him? Really? No, they weren't purposefully hiding it from Cell. They were just focused on themselves more than anyone else. Hence why Gohan, Goten, and Trunks don't have the form either. But this kind of does rub Cell the wrong way. Beerus fights the two and in Super Saiyan Blue, they're even more impressive as rivals for him. He really hit the jackpot here, he's not angry at all. And in addition to that, this planet has some pretty great food. So afterwards, Beerus decides. He wants to offer to train two people on here. He doesn't want to have too many training on his planet, but two should be enough. This would help him find a great rival, and with another person there, that'll help motivate said rival. Plus, he does prefer the stronger people to come with him. Well, a lot of people are actually fine with not going. All the humans are incredibly strong on their own, and obviously they wouldn't be picked anyways, so they accept the fact that they're not going, and they don't really care too much. Same for the hybrid Saiyans. Who cares about training with Beerus when they're already so strong? Goku, Vegeta, and Cell probably would want to the most, but there's an issue here. Beerus is more so interested in Vegeta and Cell. Vegeta because he seems like the stronger Saiyan, and Cell because, well, he's not even a Saiyan, he's something completely different. He definitely has way more potential than the other two, even if he isn't as strong as them right at the moment. No offense to Goku. Goku isn't really special to Beerus here since he has a whole buffet of Super Saiyan gods to pick from, so they don't really develop the same rivalry that they did. Goku's a bit sour about this, but he understands and accepts it. And you know what? Instead, he decides he's going to train intensely on Earth with everyone there. He'll prove Beerus wrong, so he begins training with Gohan and Goten, with Gohan showing off some impressive power. As for Nappa, he'll stick to training with Goku and Ko. It's kind of a shame he didn't get to go to Beerus' planet with Vegeta, but whatever. 
I mean, how much good training can they get there, really? Earth is fine anyways. You know what? This might not be so bad. There's a lot of strong people on Earth, and if he's right, well, he proves Beerus wrong and gets stronger. That should show him. He'll regret not training Goku. Anywho, this next period of time goes relatively normal. Vegeta and Cell are training on Beerus' planet, while everyone on Earth continues their training. And they have an unexpected visitor, that being the Frieza Force. They come on Earth one day, get the Dragon Balls, and decide to revive Frieza. But he doesn't attack right away, of course, no. He's gonna get some training in. Although he hates the idea of it, he still has to do it. I mean, sure, he is the Emperor after all, his strength is better than anyone else's. But just to be a little safe, he's gonna do some training. And during this time of training, he even unlocks a new form, Golden Frieza. How marvelous. So this should be enough. He decides now is the time to head to Earth. His strength should be more than enough to match up against those Saiyans. A few months later, the Frieza Force descends on Earth once more, this time actually revealing themselves. And pretty much instantly, his entire army is wiped out by the Z Fighters. I mean, the army wasn't that big of a threat before, so I'd imagine now it's even less of a threat. But luckily for Frieza, one of the monkeys that he wanted to go after is already there, the one called Goku. Well, until Vegeta arrives, it looks like he can have some fun with this one. He's about to step before the challenge, but then Gohan steps in. He hasn't really gotten to test his power at all. Goku's had a lot of the fun, but after all their training so far, Gohan decides this will be a great opportunity to show off his power and everything he's learned from Goku. In Super Saiyan, he actually gives Frieza a decent amount of trouble, and Frieza's already in his final form. Well, Frieza knows he has something above this, but this is a little bit concerning. I mean, his golden form should dominate this guy, but he's surprised at the strength of the Saiyan nonetheless. Goten even steps in, wanting to join Gohan in this fight. Gohan kinda wanted to do this alone, but whatever, he might as well let Goten have some fun too, and the two greatly overpower Frieza, just in Super Saiyan alone. This just serves to anger Frieza. Not only is Goku's son fighting him, but another one of Goku's sons is fighting him too, and this one's even younger. It's so embarrassing. No more, he turns golden, and Gohan's prepared to end it by going into blue himself. But Goku steps in, this is his fight. Since he's had such a huge head start with Blue, he's even stronger than he was in the original story of Resurrection F. So on top of surpassing Frieza, he actually, well, greatly surpasses him. It's pretty much not even fair once Goku goes Blue. The gap in power is so intense that Goku's able to win this fight. He can tell Frieza's angered and he's suspicious about what Frieza's plan can do, so he doesn't drop his guard and actually ends up defeating Frieza. He's surprised at how easily he was able to do it, and how well Gohan and Goten performed. But more importantly, he got the win here. Vegeta and Cell didn't need to intervene. He wonders if they even knew what happened. You know what, whatever. This is something he can brag to Vegeta about later on. He got to kill Frieza, twice. Together, the three members of the Sun family fist bump. A job well done. Dang, Nappa's a little bit disappointed though. He basically sat on the sidelines the entire time. Ah well, at least he got some exercise in killing a bunch of Frieza Force soldiers. Even though he didn't get the win on Frieza, well, that was at least pretty cathartic for him. Nevertheless, he's a good sport about it, and congratulates Goku and his sons. This Kakarot never ceases to impress him. Vegeta and Cell actually were watching from Beerus' planet. Cell is just kind of amused. This is that Frieza guy he heard about? What a bad excuse for an emperor, and Vegeta's just sitting there. A little schmitz. Dang, he missed it. He doesn't know how Kakarot scales in terms of power to him, but one thing he does know, Kakarot's ahead in terms of wins. Anywho, next up we have the Universe 6 tournament. And I'll be completely honest, as usual, I think it's very redundant to cover this unless the results are very close. And to be completely fair, here it's not close at all. Realistically, the team would be Goku, Vegeta, Cell, Gohan, and of course Nappa as the final member. But regardless of the team's makeup, they would most likely win. And it's not even really a contest, he would be the only one that stands a chance. And Frost with his poison, but he'd get disqualified. There is one small note here though. Kaba would still get Super Saiyan like normal, but really, after seeing all the other Saiyans using Super Saiyan God in blue, he kinda gets interested in that and wonders if he could do that for himself. So he's gonna keep that in mind and you all should as well. And of course, resulting from the Universe 6 tournament, we're gonna be leading into the future Trunks arc. We open on a scene in the future. Trunks is fighting an unknown threat, one that actually looks vaguely familiar. He's in Super Saiyan right now, and with his natural power, he's able to do decently well, but this guy is definitely strong. He's someone that shouldn't be underestimated. It's Goku? Or at least it looks like Goku, it definitely isn't actually Goku. But the thing is here, Goku Black doesn't have a huge advantage on Trunks in terms of power. No, Trunks got a lot stronger after the Cell Saga. His base and Super Saiyan are much stronger. But after what he saw in the Cell Saga, did you really think that's all he would take away? No. Trunks shows off Super Saiyan God. Goku Black is both surprised and appalled. This Saiyan, this mortal, he's making fun of gods by using this power. 
It's a disgusting mockery that should be punished. Too bad for Goku Black, he's not gonna win here. He has the body of whatever other Goku he stole from whatever other timeline. Meaning, yeah, he would be stronger than normal, but given Trunks' training and how strong he is now with Super Saiyan God, he doesn't really stand a chance. Especially if Trunks goes full power from the start, which he most likely would because Trunks is one that likes to get things done right away. He doesn't screw around. Although he feels kind of weird about it, he ends up deciding to kill this threat. He looks like Goku, but he's 99% sure it isn't actually Goku. That 1% worries him though. But problem solved then, right? Well, not really. Right after he kills Goku Black, Zamasu then reveals himself, angered. What is this, a Kai? He looks a lot like Shin, so he assumes he's a Kai. And quick side note, due to how strong Trunks is, he would do a lot better in the Buu Saga, meaning Shin and Kibito would most likely be alive, including Beerus too, who currently is watching all this go down from his planet. Zamasu came to this timeline because he knew this mortal was messing with time. And Trunks actually isn't fighting alone here. No, this whole time he was actually defending Shin, who was on Earth warning Trunks of the threat and is now being attacked by Goku Black and Zamasu. And now that Zamasu has revealed himself, Shin spreads the word, as Trunks then goes in for the kill. But he can't kill him for some reason, Zamasu regenerates. Okay, well, he tries again, using all his power this time. It still doesn't work, he somehow regenerates. Zamasu laughs. Ah, these foolish mortals. If only they knew what Zamasu wished for, immortality. No matter what Trunks does, he can't kill Zamasu. But it's not really too big of an issue. There's still maybe a way to seal Zamasu. Trunks realizes he can't do this alone, so he calls for backup. Immediately out of the blue, Zamasu feels a sharp pain in his side as he's stabbed and begins getting drained of his energy. What's going on? Well, I mentioned Trunks killed the androids in the last part, but this is a little bit more fun. The person that attacks Zamasu is Cell, still in his imperfect form. After the experience in the Buu Saga, Trunks immediately killed the androids, but realized maybe Cell could change. I mean, if he could change back there, maybe he could do the same with this Cell in his timeline once he shows up. When he eventually did encounter Cell, he was able to greatly overpower the bio android and offered to teach him this power. He was able to appeal to his senses in the same way that Goku did. And as you could probably tell, Cell of course is an evil here, and with the androids gone, he doesn't have any real objectives either. Trunks was able to convince him over time, wanting a new ally and partner, appealing to Cell's Saiyan side. He saw how it worked back then, so he tried the same exact thing here, and it ended up working. As for the other two androids, he would have liked to do the same, but they seemed irredeemable. Cell, he at least knew that there was a shot at doing that. And after what they did to Gohan and all his friends, Trunks wasn't going to let it slide with the androids. Cell at least didn't do anything too bad yet, seemingly. He was a bit of a clean slate, still a bad guy, but not as terrible as normal. Creating a Keyblade, Zamasu then slices Cell's tail off, as he regenerates it. Wow, that was a tasty snack. Zamasu just gave him a ton of energy. Of course, Zamasu heals from the wound and doesn't feel too much from this. But after hearing about Zamasu's immortality, Cell's a little bit interested. He looks at Trunks and Trunks nods. Perfect, no pun intended. Cell lets out a solar flare. Zamasu's blinded, doesn't know what's going on. Shin watches in confusion as Cell's tail opens above Zamasu then completely coming down on him and swallowing Zamasu whole. What a tasty snack, and he's immortal too. Maybe he has infinite energy now. He can keep stealing energy from this guy and have no limit of the supply. Trunks essentially just gave him food for life. And in order to assure Zamasu doesn't try to influence him somehow, he makes sure Zamasu's in sort of a state of limbo, constantly absorbing his energy so Zamasu can't regenerate. How delicious. Watching from his planet, Beerus and Whis are pretty happy. They didn't really know too much about this Trunks guy other than what Shin told them. But he and this android seem to prevent two disasters now, once with Boo and now with this Kai. And now that Shin sent out the warning to everyone about Zamasu, Trunks would probably be hailed as a hero across all the universes. He stopped a multiversal threat, and this could have some pretty big implications. And alongside that, Cell now has Zamasu with him. These two things have some pretty big implications. So along with the present timeline, we'll cover the finale of the future timeline in the next part as well. And with all that out of the way, I feel like this is a good spot to leave off for now. So what did you guys think about this part? How do you think Cell and Vegeta's training will go on Beerus' planet? What about Goku, Gohan, and Goten? And as for Trunks and future Cell, what's next for them? Leave all your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. I'll be sure to check them out to see what you guys think. As always, if you liked the video, be sure to drop a like. And let's try to hit that like goal so we can get another part to the series. If you haven't already, why not subscribe? As well as hitting the bell icon to get notified about any future parts of this what if, or any other videos that I upload on my channel. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.